myself into my message here. Um, and this, again, um, for those of you, just because we are uh, Facebook live streaming, um, to let everyone know, we will not be meeting at church next Sunday. We will be doing this. We will be live streaming um, a full service. Well, not quite a full service because we won't have music. Although someone suggested I sing a solo, and I'm not quite there yet. But, um, but we, there will be readings. There will be prayers. There will be blessings. Um, there will be a message, a meditation. So um, that will be our worship next week. And... Um, for the next, probably the next couple of weeks, uh, depending on how things go. As we said earlier, the situation is fluid. So um, keep keep up with us via uh, Facebook or uh, watch out for our emails and uh, watch the website because we will post it on all of those. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. So, my friends, will you pray with and for me? God of all creation, Calm our hearts and open our hearts and spirits to your loving grace for all your children. Amen. 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 Well, I, this reading is, is interesting to me. Um, it, it came at the right time, talking about separation. Um, but it also was the scripture that I used, the gospel scripture that I used at my ordination. Um, because it's very a very powerful uh, discussion of who's in and who's out and, and who's legitimate and who's not and who worships quote unquote properly. Um, so all about drawing those lines, right? So it does indeed seem appropriate this week um, talking about separation and putting up barriers, and isolation, deciding who's in and who's out. It resonates in a lot of ways, doesn't it? Uh, and as we head into uh, social isolation, I hope most of you are going to be as isolating as you can, um, given you know uh, responsibilities and, and work requirements and so on. Um, those of us, as I said, those of us who can, whose work allows us to, and so on. Um, separation is very much on our minds right now. We are spread out in the congregation. Right, keeping that distance. How far is far enough? How many people is too many? Are grocery stores okay if I go in and out quickly? Um, or if the store limits how many people are in at a time? Some stores are doing that. Um, what about fast food? Is drive through okay or should I go in or which is better? Um, or is delivery best? Um, what should I and who should I be watching out for? People who are coughing, people who look flushed like they might have a fever. I mean, you know, so these are common sense sorts of, of questions, and various officials have given us actually various answers. But there are other questions that are not so benign. We were talking about this a little bit before church. U.S. News has reported, and it's been in the social media as well, that there have been cases of Asian people being harassed refused service or avoided. Uh, Chinese restaurants and sushi places and faux cafes um, have been boycotted. And I understand that Asian markets, Asian stores have plenty of stock and some people, because some people are avoiding them. Strange that this doesn't seem to be happening to Italian restaurants. Yeah. <clears throat> this is simply xenophobia, my friends. Uh, it's completely irrational. A random person of Korean or Japanese or any other culture, and, and by the way, we white folks are often very bad at knowing which is which. People can't tell a Vietnamese person from a Korean person. It drives me crazy. Um, but they are no more likely to be suffering from COVID-19 than anyone else. And I know that none of you feel this way, but it's a very disturbing thing to see that othering that drawing a boundary and a barrier. Now, the Samaritans of Jesus' day were treated the same way by Jewish people, and they treated Jewish people that way. Um, and yet the Romans viewed them as basically the same. They were Jewish, period. The Samaritans were considered a subset of, of Jews. The Samaritans were descended from the Hebrews left behind mm -hmm. in the exile to Babylon. 
um, uh, they, you know, they were not taken to Babylon. They were the farm workers, the vine dressers. The, they were the people who worked the land, and so the Babylonians left them there so they could work the land for them. And they developed, developed their faith in a different direction than did the people who went to Babylon. So when the exiles from Babylon returned to Jerusalem, they imposed their form of Judaism uh, on the country so that you know, there, were, there were these two different strains, kinds, of Judaism. Um, so the Samaritans worshipped on Mount Gerizim because they couldn't get into Jerusalem. It was occupied by the Babylonians. So they, uh, they worshipped on Gerizim. And so when the Jews came back, they were allowed into Jerusalem, so they took over the Temple Mount. So there was the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and the Mount, uh, Mount Gerizim for the Samaritans. So the returning Jews saw the Samaritans as sort of apostates, people who had wandered from the true faith. So there was a line drawn between them. Jews didn't trust or associate with Samaritans, and vice versa, um, which actually lasted well past Jesus' time. You know, there's still Samaritans around today, mm -hmm. right? And this is, um, this is the context for what Jesus says about the Samaritans and the Jews in today's reading. Uh, for an observant Jew of Jesus' time, Contact with the Samaritan was both culturally and religiously wrong. Um, this was also the point of Jesus' parable, of course, about the good Samaritan. It would have seen a contradiction in, contradiction in terms, um, a, a, a good Samaritan, right? Separation. And here's another resonance for us. We in the LGBT community are familiar with separation and boundary drawing and a dangerous virus, aren't we? When HIV AIDS first appeared, it was called GRID for gay-related immunodeficiency. It was ignored. It was minimized as, you know, only a few people get it, right? And even made the objects of jokes and laughter by the Reagan administration. Um, sometimes people find that one hard to believe. Check it out on YouTube. There are clips of bad press conferences, people laughing about the idea of AIDS. Mm -hmm. We remember the ostracism of anyone even thought to be gay, of people not going to their hairdresser, of teachers being fired, and people being evicted when they became ill. One of the motivators, in fact, for equal marriage was the fact that so many partners could not inherit from their, uh, from their partners. When their partner died, the family swooped in and took everything. And there was nothing that the partner could do. People were kicked out of their homes while they were still mourning their partner. It was and is brutal. So MCCs came together and supported not only church members but the wider community. Um, often MCC pastors were the only ones who would go and visit AIDS patients in the hospital, conduct their funerals, comfort their families and friends and partners. People living with AIDS, and this is before we knew about HIV and seroconversion, they were convict, uh, evicted, they were banned from working certain jobs, they were treated abominably in many, many ways, but MCCs were there, loving, supporting each other, doing what needed to be done, finding ways to minister to their siblings, food pantries, visiting friends, just all kinds of support, because that's the human thing to do. Not just the Christian thing, but the human thing. MCC and some other faith traditions now do not draw boundaries around who is in, who is out, who is accepted, and who is not. While we need to isolate ourselves right now to remain healthy, isolation does not have to mean separation. We live in a very different world than we did 40 years ago. Today we can keep in touch by email, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, constant contact, Snapchat, Instagram, other forms of social media, right? 
We can text each other. We can stay in touch and we can maintain contact. And as I'll say again, if you're not receiving our newsletter, please give uh, one of our board members your email address so that you can get that and keep, keep get the email and keep up on what's going on. Um, if you haven't liked the church's page on Facebook, if you're on Facebook and have not liked our page, please do because we post all kinds of information and so on on there. Um, or followed us on Instagram or Twitter, do that too. We're, we're on both. Um, we can make it through this together if we stay in contact, if we stay connected. In speaking with the woman at the well, Jesus actually broke through two boundaries. Teaching a woman and taking water from a Samaritan. And she did the same. Speaking with a man she didn't know and sharing water with a non-Samaritan. The message that he brought, that Jesus brought, was shared with the whole city of Samaritans. And then he and the disciples stayed for several days. They were separated, but not isolated. And we too can remain connected in spite of distance, in spite of quarantine or social isolation. It's easier for us today with the technology we have available. Let's take advantage of it and continue to care for each other as a loving community. Remember, isolation does not mean separation. In all God's names, amen. amen.